Hello, my name is Cesar Ortiz. Okay, hi Cesar. We're going to ask you some questions about your thoughts on the Holocaust. Okay. Um, do you think Hitler was solely responsible for the Holocaust? No, I don't think Hitler was solely responsible for the Holocaust because the people who were affected by the Holocaust, they could have done something to retaliate, which would have lessened the effect of the Holocaust, and it, it might have probably stopped it because they were trying to they were trying to lessen the effects, yeah, as I said, they were trying to lessen the effects, meaning that they, they could have stopped the Holocaust completely, or they could have influenced people with greater power during that time to, like, go against Hitler, like, retaliate against Hitler, and try to change his mind, or, like, form another plan that would have, would have had a different outcome for the Holocaust. So why don't you, why do you think there wasn't more resistance from the Jews? I don't think there was more resistance from the Jews because they might have been scared because the ho in the, during the Holocaust, um, the, hung the the people who were in charge of arresting the Jews, sending them to concentration camps, and and like mistreating them, they all had weapons, they all had power, they were strong, and they were all they, they were all like in they they all had like a close like a direct connection to Hitler, so the Jews might have been scared like if they would have all died, and they might have also been optimists, and they might have believed all the propaganda that was happening. Okay, so why don't you think no one did anything like other nations? I don't think other nations did anything, or anyone else in general, because they didn't want to get involved with what was happening, because if they would get involved, then that would create enemies for that nation, that nation would have to waste resources, they would have to waste money, and that would, that would probably, that, would, that can result in the nation being bankrupt, also, they didn't want to lose maybe their military, their soldiers, because then they would have to recruit new ones, and it, it might cause more problems for the nation. And if other nations would start bombing them because they were helping, like they were helping the nations against Hitler, um, if the nations with Hitler started bombing the nation that was helping out, they um, it would have been deadly and, and violent. It could have resulted in a, a bigger war. Okay, so what? What do you think we can learn from the Holocaust experience? From the Holocaust experience, I think we can learn that humans are um, humans can be indifferent and silent, as the Jews and the other nations they were indifferent and silent, meaning they didn't really interfere with what's going on. So humans can just be like can be bystanders. Humans can be bystanders, and nations as a whole can also be bystanders, not doing anything. And we can also learn that. Um, Humans can also be ruthless, and they can they they can they can cause more harm than we usually think. Like in the fairy tales, we usually be like, oh, they they it was a happy ever after. But in real life, it usually isn't always a happy ever after, and it's usually caused by humans. Why it, it always ends in like a catastrophe that takes years to repair. Thank you for your time, Caesar. My name is Milano Tuscanga. Hello. Um, do you think Hitler was solely responsible for the Holocaust? I think Hitler was responsible for the Holocaust because I think he was the main person who was in charge of everything and he decided who lives and who dies. Why do you think there was no more resistance from the Jews? I think there was no more resistance from the Jews because if they like would like self-defense themselves, I think they lose everything and I think that was not pretty much good to do. Why do you think no one did anything? I don't think anybody did anything because like I said before, maybe they were scared to lose everything they had and I think it, like, it is not good to be silent but they should have done something for it. What can we learn from the Holocaust experience? From the Holocaust? I think we can learn that um, that many people like portray unfairly for small things, and that some people think that other people are inferior than others. Thank you for your time. You're welcome. I'm Mr. Cayetano and I'm a world history teacher. I teach AP World History, Honors World History, and CP World History, and I've been a teacher 
uh, for PUSD for eight and a half years. Okay. Hi, Mr. Cayetano. Um, we're going to ask you some questions. That's the moment. And we have another person, Manya. Okay. Do you think Hitler was solely responsible for the Holocaust? I do not think that Hitler was solely responsible for the Holocaust. There were different reasons why World War II occurred, and so there was a lot of problems that Germany was facing um, out of World War I, and the Treaty of Versailles basically punished Germany into being in a bad economic situation, and a lot of the people were basically in a bad economic state for 10 to 20 years. And that led Hitler to rise to power. And um, also, uh, Wilson's idea of a 14-point plan, one of the things was to have a League of Nations to prevent future wars from happening. And those countries didn't stop Hitler uh, from taking other nations around Germany. So there's other parts. So he's not the only one to blame for the Holocaust. If he wasn't uh, Germany's leader, perhaps there wouldn't be a Holocaust. So why do you think there wasn't more resistance from the Jews? Can you repeat the question again? Why do you think there wasn't more resistance from the Jews? You're saying more resistance from the Jewish people? Yeah. Or resistance from other groups of people? Just the Jews. Um, the Jews were originally from Israel, which is a country now, but it didn't exist back then. Uh, so they were throughout Europe and in Russia and some in the United States. So they weren't a unified group. They were basically split throughout different parts of the world. Uh, so they didn't have like one central government. They didn't have a way to form a military. And so they were very successful people in business. So they had uh, jobs dealing with financial purposes throughout different parts of Europe and in different countries. Uh, so I don't think that they felt uh, that they were gonna be attacked like they were as um, the Holocaust now, we know what happened to them. So basically, if you have um, a government and you are able to collect taxes and form a military, like in the United States, we have uh, citizens that participate in election, we have a leader, and they, Congress determines uh, the budget for the military so we can be uh, in security and have a national defense. Uh, the Jews were living in countries that were like immigrants and other Places and they were segregated throughout. So it would be very difficult for them to form one strong, and that's probably why they didn't have a strong resistance. Why do you think no one did anything like as in other nations? Why do you think no one did anything? So is your question basically saying that you believe no one did anything like other nations or people? I'm trying to get a clarification with the question. To help, like to help earlier than when they helped. <clears throat> like the other nations didn't help. Why do you think the other nations didn't help earlier than they did? Okay. Um, well, I think that my original comment from before of having the Jews segregated and not together in one area uh, made it difficult for them to resist. And so since they were not a specific country, uh, we learned in World War I that there were these alliances between countries. So if they weren't like an official nation, it's hard to form an alliance and get protection that way. Um, another reason, um, I believe, for example, like the United States, they wanted to be neutral, not get involved in another conflict in Europe. So they were basically saying like that's their problem and they have to deal with it. And I believe that most of the Europeans, uh, they were basically willing to go to war again. So they were probably more concerned about their own citizens versus trying to help out a group of people that didn't have their own nation. Okay, so what, do, what can we learn from the Holocaust experience? Okay, so what can we learn about the Holocaust experience? Um, well, obviously, it's important that you do something if you see things wrong, like you need to stand up for people if you see things that are happening that you don't agree with. So perhaps they can't defend themselves or stand up for themselves, so then maybe you can be an advocate for them. 
Um, it's important that we learn from our history because history tends to repeat itself. So if anybody is under attack or their rights are taken away, uh, we should try to do what we can as a people uh, to help out those, especially if they're minorities or if there's not a large number of them. Uh, a lot of the Jews that live in Germany, uh, I believe they only represented about 1% of the whole German population. So they're a very small minority. And so if what we can learn out of this is that no matter who someone is, what they believe in, what they stand for, if we're able to make sure that their rights are not violated or they're arrested for being who they are, then I feel that uh, we can prevent that from happening again. Okay, thank you for your responses and your time. You're very welcome, and good luck with your projects. Thank you. Hi, I'm Ms. Andrews, I'm senior class counselor for Yamisha High School. Okay, I'm Kimberly, and I'm going to ask you some questions about how you feel about the Holocaust. Do you think Hitler was solely responsible for the Holocaust? I think that he was primarily responsible for the Holocaust, but I also think that um, when somebody is in a position of power, society has a responsibility to weigh the pros and cons of what that dictator or what that person in power is saying. And what Hitler did that was very effective is that he used the power of fear and the power of scapegoating to get society um, excited and change their perception from the Jews being a productive member of society to actually perceiving them as a, as a threat to the German existence. And so I think while Hitler was 88% responsible for that, I think society also has a responsibility to, um, to weigh, yeah, to weigh, to weigh the pros and cons of what a dictator or a person in power is saying. And if that doesn't sound moral, they have a responsibility to rise up against it. So I think both are responsible. Why do you think there wasn't more resistance from the Jews? I'm, I'm not sure, to be honest, but just the first thing that comes to my head is that more than likely the Jews were outnumbered because if I remember correctly, and I hope I'm saying this right, they were um, a growing population, you know, um, in German society. And so when you have when you're, you know, a minority in a larger society, you don't have a lot of power to to resist. You don't have a lot of political power. You don't have a lot of economic power. So they were kind of vulnerable to what happened to them. Why do you think no one did anything? And by no one, I mean like other nations. Why do I? Um, I don't know. <laughs> I'm going to be honest, I don't know, but the first thing that comes to mind is it would be interesting to know um, to what extent did they really know what was going on. Like, for example, um, if you look at slavery, a lot of people in the North had no idea how bad slavery was in the South. A lot of people in the North had no idea how bad um, things were in the South during the Civil Rights Movement until TV published it, you know, until, you know, TV kind of was a conduit to, you know, bringing that reality into people's living rooms. And they're like, oh my God, it's a terrible thing. So I have to wonder, did the rest of the countries know exactly what was going on? I mean, to what, to what extent did they benefit from, from, you know, what Hitler was doing? I don't know. Now I feel like I need to go home and study <laughs> and figure that out. <laughs> Okay, um, what do you think we can learn from the Holocaust? Well, I think what we can learn is that, um, <sighs> you think you can learn so much. One of the things that we can learn is that minority po populations such as the Jews, no matter how small they are, are, can be very powerful. And the Jews were a very powerful group of a very powerful culture, and they still are extremely powerful today. Strong families, strong religious background, hard work ethic. Um, and so you have to look at them and say, hey, even though they were a minority, they were very strong people. And so you can't count minority groups out for being strong. And, and if they're, if, if it's, and in some cases, majority groups will look at that strength and feel like their place or their status quo in life will be threatened. Um, 
we can also learn that fear, scapegoating, um, are very powerful tools that can be used in rhetoric. Rhetoric is a very positive, uh, someone just told me this, rhetoric um, is a very uh, powerful tool to change the perception of people's minds. It doesn't have to be right, it doesn't have to be wrong, it's just very powerful and all of a sudden people are all of a sudden seeing the Jews, go from seeing the Jews as a positive influence to being, oh my gosh, they're negative, they're a negative influence on society, they're trying to take our jobs, they're trying to take over, and all of a sudden things are put into place to, to eliminate them. And so if you look at society today, that model is still being used for some groups. You know, Muslim minority groups are being scapegoated. You know, Hispanic immigrants who are very productive members of this country are being scapegoated terribly um, because of fear, because those groups are very powerful. So I think we can look at that, the model that was used, and as a society, recognize how harmful that is to society and hopefully put ourselves in positions to... Um, to speak up when we see those things happening and not let it, not let history repeat itself. Thank you so much for your time and your responses. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. Uh, hi, my name is Ashley and I'm a senior at Ganesha High School. Hi, my name is Vanya. I would like to ask you some questions about the Holocaust. Do you think Hitler was solely responsible for the Holocaust? I think he had a major role in the Holocaust, but however, he did have other people helping him out. For example, like the German government, the military, and then the Nazi party officials. He couldn't do it himself. He definitely had other people help him out. Why do you think there wasn't more resistance from the Jews? There was definitely resistance from the Jews. However, I think it was the fact that they were outnumbered, plus they didn't have the resources or the weapons to fight back against the Germans. And then also having fear implemented into them, like that kind of held them back from fighting. Why do you think no one, the nations, did anything? Um, I don't think they had or I don't think they were able to do anything because maybe they felt like they were um, weak against the military, against the German military. And then I don't think they were well aware of what was really happening in the camps or what was really happening behind the Holocaust. I think it, they just didn't think it was that serious about how many people were being killed or tortured. What can we learn from the Holocaust experience? We can learn that no matter how much fear is implemented into us, that we can't, we have to fight back. Um, we can't just turn our backs against minorities like the Jews. We have to be able to stand up for them because one thing that society didn't do was stop the Holocaust or fight for it. Um, we just kind of like just stood back and let the Holocaust happen. So one thing we can learn is that. We need to fight against something that's wrong in society. Thank you for your time.